so fortunate. Um, I've known Justin for about six years. Um, in life, you come across some neat people. Um, he has a great personal story. Um, um, even his testimony is really fascinating. His testimony, um, what he's done with uh, money. I've got some news for you. Who studied algebra this week? Anybody? History? Okay. You know how many times you're going to use algebra in your life? I hate to tell you. It, it's really disappointing because of all the work you're doing right now. But money is something you're going to deal with every day, every week, every month. Um, when you launch into the, uh, into the world, whether it be college or work, the world is going to bombard you. There's going to be booths set up at your colleges to get, give you credit cards. And they're going to give you as much as they can to sink you. Um, now the goofballs that are, that are doing it, they're not doing it to sink you. But that's what the system is set up to do is to max you out and keep you captive for as long as possible. Um, so I say all that to say this is a, an incredibly important topic um, and you will wrestle with it your whole life. Um, so with that, I'll introduce Justin Rare. He's from Aurora. Um, uh, and I'll, I won't mess up your story. I'll let you do your story. Welcome and it's your floor. Thank you so much. Cool. For Well, thanks for coming tonight. So we're talking about money, right? Does anybody have some? Yeah. It's, is it more fun when you have some or when you don't have any? When you have some. Yeah, I was talking with a friend of mine actually when uh, Rick and I worked together at Chase and uh, we were talking about budgeting and how to have some money left over at the end of the month. And I said, well, you know, I understand budgeting is not really a, a lot of fun. And he says, you know what's not fun? Not having any money. Right. <laughs> like, yes. I okay. I'm going to use that. That's good material. So, does anybody have any questions about what we might be covering tonight, or anything specifically that you want answers on? Wow. So I can kind of just talk about whatever for the next hour or so, and yeah. it'll be good. <laughs> okay. Well, as we go along, if you have questions, just stop me. This can be completely uh, interactive. It doesn't have to be me talking. In fact, if I talk for an hour it might not be nearly as much fun as if we all talk and we have a conversation for the next hour. Does that sound good? Are you willing to engage with me a little bit? Yeah. You, I think you might be. What was your name again? Michael. Michael, yeah, I think Michael. That's a pig. Wait a minute. Yeah. Could you guys really sit next to each other? <laughs> <laughs> Mike Square, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so a couple of things we're gonna talk about, just you know, introducing uh, my story, we're going to talk about nerds and free spirits, savers and spenders, and how we interact with money and how that, that can be different for different people. We're actually going to analyze a bank statement. We're going to build a budget. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the debt snowball, how to make money giving. Uh, we'll talk about compound interest and big purchases also. I think that all of us will touch every single one of these in one way or another. Are you ready? Caleb, right? Okay. Okay. Sorry. Caleb. Yeah, that's right. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> One off. I know, right? Is there a Joshua? Okay. <laughs> cool. So I grew up not rich. And so what does that mean? Uh, my parents got divorced when I was really young. I was going into the second grade. Uh, we moved to Denver. My dad stayed down running his farm. And without his thousand dollars of child support a month, we wouldn't have been able to make ends meet. Uh, my mom was an amazing mom did amazing things uh, with my brother, and myself, and my sister. Uh, single parents really have it a lot harder than when you have two parents, right? Because they have to do everything that two parents do, but they have to do it by themselves. And so some of the things that she did in an amazing way was show me how to work. So there's sometimes that she was working two to three jobs just to keep the lights on and keep life happening, right? And so for most of her her life, she was focused more on how do we survive the next day, the next week, the next month. She didn't have a lot of time thinking about what kind of future do I want to have and what, what things do I want to uh, direct my kids towards. Uh, but she was an amazing mom and did so many amazing things for us. I have nothing but great things to say about her. 
But growing up in that environment meant that I knew a lot of my friends had a lot more than I did. And uh, at well, life changed at 17. So we have a few people who are either 17 or close. There's a couple of juniors, right? Yeah, so I actually met my wife in Algebra 2 Trig in high school, <laughs> junior year. So you just never know when God's going to bring your spouse into your life. Algebra so. is so right. Amen to that. So, uh, but in my life experience, you know, living on very little, I, I always wanted to make sure that whatever I could possibly do to earn money and to hold on to money, to keep a little distance between me and life, I wanted to do that. And so I was rebuilding the, the engine of my 69 Mustang for the first time, and I had gone on a trip to uh, England and Wales with my science and technology group at school. Uh, it was an amazing trip, certainly less expensive than if I tried to travel there now to do the same trip. Uh, but what I didn't pay attention to was it takes a dollar fifty to equal one pound. So I'm pulling money out of the ATM, not considering the exchange rates, and so I get home to find out that I had spent all of my money and then some. And so I had the overdraft fees and I, it, something uh, really kind of broke inside of me because I had been so irresponsible. I couldn't believe that I had done that when I had set out this life goal to you know, be responsible with money and uh, here I am at 17 and I've already not done that. So a good man, or I would say a good woman, will leave an inheritance to his or her children's children. And the wealth of the sinner is stored up for the righteous, it's Proverbs 13, 22. And so there's some amazing things as you open the scriptures. I think this is uh, 2,500 to 3,000 years old, and it could have been written yesterday. Mm -hmm. You know, it's still very, very applicable for us. So why are we even talking about money or focusing on finances? So as you go to Walmart or you go out to eat, anywhere that you're at where people are, right, you go to a sporting event, 38% of Americans sometimes live paycheck to paycheck. 15% usually live paycheck to paycheck, and 23 always live paycheck to paycheck. And so that paycheck to paycheck piece is, I just got money and then I spend it all, and then I'm waiting for the next paycheck so I can start spending again. So there's no margin in this scenario. So 76% of us, so basically three quarters of us, are sometimes, usually, or always living paycheck to paycheck. Like that, that means that there's a lot of people hurting out there. Uh, and so when somebody goes uh, a little crazy in the checkout line, and you're wondering, why are they so upset over a can of beans? Like, it might be because they have a one or a three or four chance that they are totally stressed out and they have no money to be buying their food at the grocery store. So, in finances and relationships, did you realize that 44% of divorces are caused by money-related problems? Like, that's almost half. So if we could get this right, if we get money right, there's a much better chance that we'll get our marriages right. Isn't that exciting? <laughs> Nobody's thinking about marriage? I wasn't either. It's okay. It's okay. It wasn't a trick question. So hoping, so my hope in, in tonight getting together is that I could share a, about my story and what's, uh, what's happened. And then I'm also interested to hear about what you guys would like to get out of. Mike, I'm, I'm starting with you. Uh, I'm just really interested in the whole general aspect, just not just like get your paycheck and spend it right then and there. Actually having a budget and saying this is how much I want to spend, this is how much I want to save, and really a practical way of really doing that. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, this is the right class. Yeah. Cool. Where's, where did Trinity go? There we go. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Trinity, what do you want to learn tonight? Or what, 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 uh, what would be helpful? What do you think? Um, kind of along the lines of what Michael said, just like the practicality of it and like the best ways to go about it. Good. Yeah. I think we can do that? Absolutely. Anybody else? Any thoughts? Abby, what are you hoping to get out of tonight? <laughs> I don't think that can be called on. <laughs> um, how about uh, kind of like what they said, just budget and 
Connor kind of does our budget. Yeah, he's kind of so, he's pretty phenomenal at it. Yeah, so I can always learn a thing or two. I can always learn. Would you like to come up, Connor? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> might, be, might be a little hard to run through my slides. <laughs> cool. I think everybody will be able to take something away. So, in thinking about perspective, uh, how many have you have seen either of these pictures before? Yeah, we got, yeah, well, we got a lot of them here. This will be pretty fast. Okay, so does everybody see the young lady in the picture on the left? Mm -hmm. Yes. I got a, there's a couple of looks like. Yeah. <laughs> there's a candle. No. Okay, so for the young lady, she's, she's turning her head like this to the right, so that's her jawbone and then a necklace, right? And then there's eyelashes and the nose. Is everybody seeing it? Yeah. Yeah? Okay, cool. And then the old lady. Yeah. No. I don't see the old lady. <laughs> okay, so the old lady, there's her chin here, her mouth, oh, yeah. her nose, and then... She's a, got a feather in her hand. Yeah, oh, a feather. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you got it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So then in the, yeah. the picture on the right, or the left here, sorry, this one, does everybody see the candlestick? Yeah. yeah, okay, that one's pretty good. How about the two faces getting ready to kiss? Yeah. How many of you saw the two ladies, or the two people uh, getting ready to kiss before you saw the candlestick? Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. That's a different class. So a lot of this does have to do with mindset and how we look at money. And so Henry Ford said, whatever you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. What do you guys think about that? Self-fulfilling prophecy. What you think on is what you're going to get generally, right? Absolutely. <clears throat> I completely agree. And I had to do some hunting around on the second quote to find out who said it first, because there's a lot of people who have a version of it. But if you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always gotten. Mm -hmm. But that works if you're vacuuming the floor, right? We want to do a good job vacuuming the floor to clean it all up. But if we're trying to learn something new, to do something different, you just can't do the same old thing. You have to make an adjustment. There's learning and growth. So as we start talking about money, women and men are different. I know that must be shocking, right? <laughs> we're different. Okay. Now that we have that out of the way, nerds and free spirits are different. And our, our savers and our spenders are different. So women and men think differently. So this is definitely me thinking about the Mustang. Lately I've been thinking a little bit more about a Corvette, but I'm probably, I'll probably not spend the money because I don't really want to part with it. But then my wife, that's not a picture of my wife, but it could be, she loves shopping. Like if she could do more shopping, she would definitely go for a bigger shopping budget each month. Is, is that pretty typical though, for girls and guys? No? You want a Mustang? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. I don't want either. You don't want either of them? You don't want okay. to What would you rather have? <laughs> Something else. Something else. Okay, but it would be really cool, right? D. Well, of course it would be really cool. Yeah. So then on uh, spenders and savers, do you know already? Do you have a kind of an inclination? Do you like to spend money or do you like to save money? Show of hands. Show of hands, savers. Yes. Pile that money up. Thank you. I like that. How about the spenders? It's okay. We can raise them a little higher. Yeah. Spenders have, I will say this, spenders have a lot of fun. They really do. Uh, Dave Ramsey talks about how Spenders, you need a saver in your life, so you have a life, right? And then <laughs> savers, you need a spender in your life, so you have a life. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that, that is basically the story of my house. I'm super happy saving as much money as possible, and then my wife going, hey, we really need a vacation. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna have some fun. Okay, all right, once a year, here we go. <laughs> So what about, uh, this, so this free spirit and nerds is a piece right out of Dave Ramsey's Financial Peace University. And, and I love it because it's, it's absolutely portrayed in these two. So this is me, right? I wear my contacts tonight, otherwise I'd have my glasses on. And then uh, I have a lot of friends over there in the free spirit. 